And in the dis this divine silence, I invite you to join me within, within that heart space, that place where we commune with the divine, where there is only one reality, one life, one presence. And I call this presence spirit, God, the all good, it is the life force, the creation, the creative of the universe. And it is whole, perfect, and complete. And in this all goodness is all beauty, all compassion, all harmony, all wisdom, all peace, all joy, all vitality, and so much more. All is the essence of the goodness of the divine. And I know I am part of this, for the, this one reality is all there is. And it manifests as me, in and through, as me, as it manifests in the life of each and every one here today. I know that if we each recognize our oneness with the divine, we are enlivened. We are that spirit that lives in a co-creative community. And we are immersed and lived in all the attributes of God. And as this is true for each and every one of us, I accept for each and every one of us that life of God as our life right now, knowing that there is nothing that can hinder the expression of the divine manifesting in our world. We accept the divine intelligence and wisdom that is ours as it manifests in our daily activities, our daily situations, leading us into right action, right decisions in all our affairs. I affirm that we know what to do and when to do it. And everywhere we go, we are met with peace and joy and happiness. Knowing that God is all there is, we see God in every face and are surrounded by friendships, loving relationships, and harmonious interactions. And that divine abundance that is ours flows freely 
meeting all of our needs. And we see divine opportunities everywhere we look so that we can create the desire, the life that we desire. There is so much that we are open to as the divine expresses as each of us in our daily comings and goings. And I turned my attention to the prayer chest knowing that each request is a divine idea in the mind of God. That right now, divine is answering the desires of the heart. That the essence of the divine is shining through, healing all seeming discord. That the abundance, the health, the joy, the loving relationships of life is made manifest and all is well. And I give thanks that this healing presence is right here, right now, activated always in each request. Well, thankful for this service. It is so blessed as we come together today. We are blessed by the volunteers who give of their loving service by the staff, and by the presence of each one here, shining their light as the face of God. So thankful for this truth, that the life of God is our life, that we are expressions of the divine, and we are fulfilled in all aspects of our lives, that it, and that this truth is always operating and we always have access. I am so thankful. And I release these words into the law, knowing it is already done, as our word does not return void. And we join together and declare, and so it is.
like to call your attention to the prayer chests at the bottom of the stairs to the right. If there is something that is bothering you, something that you just can't sort of let go and see the truth of the matter, please leave your worries your request in the prayer chest and the practitioners will do affirmative prayer on your behalf this week. Whenever you interact with people, don't be there primarily as a function or a role, but as a field of consciousness, as a field of presence. Eric Tolley from Ernest Holmes. It is quite a burden lifted when we realize we do not have to move the world, it is going to move anyway. <laughs> Good ones, Lou. <laughs> okay, so um, I do have a video today. I am going to just speak a little bit, show the video, and then I'm going to come back and we're going to do a small uh, spiritual practice. At the end of that, this month of April, we are focusing on the third principle or law of manifesting according to John Randolph Price's book, Empowerment, which we'll be studying the whole year. These principles, he says, come in order. They're in order, and we started with attunement, you remember. Attunement, which is connecting and creating a relationship with the divine. So we always start there with connection. Last month, we focused on choice, um, choosing what we want and who we want to be. And the third uh, law is acceptance. So this month, we will be studying about acceptance. And I want to start by just sharing out of the, uh, the book Empowerment what he says about acceptance. Maybe. I have to wait for technology here. <laughs> it's unlike my papers, right? Hard copies. So step number three, the principle of acceptance. He says, simply stated, this step means that you cannot have the fulfillment of your desires without acceptance. When you choose something, the spiritual equivalent will move into the subjective area of mind. But unless you accept it right then, it will leave and return to the higher realms of consciousness. A spiritual equivalent does not stay where it is not welcomed and accepted. Interesting, huh? Charles Fillmore, who is the uh, co-founder of Unity, he explained that all of God's gifts to us are first in thought form. And when we appropriate and accept these thought forms, a pattern or an expression of that thought form is established in consciousness, okay? So God uh, speaks to us in ideas. When we accept the ideas, then they establish themselves in our consciousness. And from the writings of Ernest Holmes, we see that spirit cannot make the gift unless you accept it. Life may have given everything to you, but only that which you accept is yours. Only that which you accept is yours to use. So you accept, <laughs> can I have a shaker on that? <laughs> so you accept the increased income or the new job or the new car, the new home, the new relationship, whatever it is. Once you choose what you want, you accept the thing or experience mentally and with the fullness of your feeling nature. Let me read that again. Once you choose what you want, you accept the thing or experience mentally and with the fullness of your feeling nature. Okay, so that's what we're going to be talking about uh, the rest of this month. And the video that I found, now this will be uh, new to us. We've not experienced this person before. And I found him uh, as a guest speaker at Center for Spiritual Life Seattle. Uh, I came across him and found out he has his own church. And so I will be going there as well to see uh, for, for more of his videos. 
His, his talk is called The Tao of Success, and his name is Reverend Raymond Anderson. He's the senior minister at CSL Greater Baltimore. Okay, um, I, I found that he, I, I really loved the, his message and what he had to say. When, when we're, he's finished with his message, I would like to come back and just invite you into the silence for just a small spiritual practice after the talk. So here he is, Reverend Raymond, I think he's doctor too, I think it says on there, Reverend Dr. Raymond Anderson. I hope you enjoy. <laughs> So here we are, 2021, 2021, <laughs> yeah, wow, it's, it's 2021. We know we had an amazing, uh, what's the word I want to say, an amazing opportunity in 2020 for growth and expansion and greater consciousness and opportunities to dive into infinite possibilities of so many things like jumping into online services and online meditations and online everything in ways that we hadn't really thought about before and i mentioned that specifically because 2020 gave us an opportunity to practice new ways of being successful and it's that specific thing that i was asked to speak about today setting yourself up for success and to talk about how I've done that within my own life and what it can mean for each of us to accept the to accept the clarion call of living, moving, and having our beingness as successful individuals. Like what does that mean? So before we jump in, I want us to just anchor into this idea and to marinate on or to think about, to ponder, to consider, just, just to, to pontificate for a moment just about what does our culture say that success is? Like right, when we think just in a general cultural manner, when we say success means what? Because we always talk about, you know, our culture and society is always talking about you know, we're supposed to be successful and the benchmarks of success and what it means to be a successful person, a successful businessman, a businesswoman, what it means to be a successful minister, what it means to be a successful practitioner, what it, what it, what it, what it, what it means to be a successful individual here in the world today. And as much as we talk about it, I mean, think back, because let me talk for myself. I think back to when I was in middle school. And, or this time, I can go back as far as elementary school, because I remember the success speech. Elementary school, middle school, high school, and I don't recall, and even post, you know, graduate school, etc. I don't recall anybody ever sitting me down saying, so, Ray, this is what success is, and these are the steps on how to become a successful individual. I don't recall anybody sitting me down and giving me the blueprint of, that's the goal, success. Here is the rubric, and here are the benchmarks, here are the tools, here are the steps, here are the techniques, here are the something to be able to do that. It was pretty much like, there it is, go get it. <laughs> okay, so here we are with this amazing spiritual practice that we know that CSLs, Science of Mind and Spirit, Religious Science, we know that it gives us this amazing practice of embodying the truth that we know and living from truth with practical, applicable spiritual practices, journaling, gratitude, visioning, spiritual mind treatment, etc. So we know that there are tools and techniques to move us from point A to point B, to move us from grief and sadness through to triumph and thriving, not just surviving. We know that we have all of these things to step forward and live a more authentic and transparent and audacious life. We know that. But now it's time to, 2021, it's time to step up or ramp up that game so that we are living successful. Like, let our lives be full of it. And when I say full of it, I mean 
that we are a success, we feel success, we recognize success in all areas of our lives. No one should be simply successful financially, but physically they're, they're broken or opposite. Physically, I'm a success, I'm healthy and I'm well, but financially, so let's see, I take this penny to rob from Peter to pay Paul, then how do I get, where, where am I gonna get the next penny? And mm, let's see, like that's not true success. That's not thriving. And true success is being able to thrive, not just in the materialistic way that many people talk about success, which is money, which is that house and that car and that relationship and that jewelry and that thing, that thing, that materialistic thing, rather than success is an, an identity where we know who and what we are and we live from that space. We know that the infinite I am is ever breathing this breath in through and as us, and we allow that which it is to be what it is as us. We believe that heaven is within, and we recognize it, and we live from it when we acknowledge and understand the consciousness of heaven is within. We understand and recognize that there is only one power and one presence, God. We live and move and have our being, this understanding that all discord of every nature will be eradicated and we will be emancipated and live free from it and that this is surely to be attained by all. We recognize and understand these things. We understand that Ernest Holmes said, God in me, as me, is me. But how many of us bring that awareness, God in me, as me, is me, at work? God in me, as me, is me, in my center? God is me, as me, is me when I'm in traffic. God in me, as me, is me when I'm being triggered by family, friends, or co-workers, etc. God in me, as me, is me. And that means the infinite power of all that is, is me, as me, in each moment, breathing. There's only one mind, and that mind is God. That means these thoughts that I have are God's thoughts. These words that I speak are God's words. These feelings that I have are God's feelings and the ways that my hands and body serve is the way that God is embodying, incarnating itself and serving, walking the walk. And how do I bring that into each and every area of my life? That's what it means to be a success. Yeah. Because trust and believe, since I'm supposed to be talking a little bit about me, having grown up in an abusive family, where drugs and alcoholism and stuff was running rampant. I often, you know, tell tell the story, you know, make a joke about everyone in my family sold drugs, made drugs, took pictures of drugs, smoked the pictures of drugs, <laughs> drank them in a smoothie, but drugs and drugs was like, that was the thing. So addiction was the thing. And that when I was in um, first elementary school, was the first time I was molested. And then it happened again and again and again and again and again into my teens and again. Having been someone with great amounts of depression and suicidal ideation and self-defeating and self-limiting and like, yeah, all of that stuff. And yet, here I am. How? Why? Because somewhere in my life, Someone poured into me and I took it and I held on to their idea, this, this timeless wisdom. I held it and grasped it and made it my own. I heard the words of Viktor Frankl who said that which is to shine and give light must endure burning. I heard the words of Gandhi and be the change. I heard the words of Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. talking about move forward based upon the headlights and not the tail lights. You know, I heard these words that I chose to hold and move forward. And so what I want to share with you right now are some of the things that I've personally taken as my method of living successful. And when I say living successful, once again, I'm talking about bringing success into how we live physically, emotionally, spiritually. So physical, emotion, spirit, Intellect, how we live, you know, in our mind when people say, you know, I'm not really good at, at remembering names. Intellectual success, relationships, 
and then number six is finances, and then number seven is the bringing it all together because I am the common denominator in everywhere and every place that I go. I'm the common denominator. So how do I bring that success into all six of these areas through me being it? So I'm going to give you the steps as an acronym. So take success and we start with the first S, see it. It says in the Bible where the people have no vision, they perish. So you must see it, see what it is. Success is living fully, magnificently and powerfully, but you have to see it. So when you see yourself as a success, physically, emotionally, intellectually, financially, etc., what do you see? What do you envision? And whether you do visioning as a practice or you do a vision board, because those are two different types of vision practice, it is being able to quantify and qualify in third eye chakra kind of stuff or however you need to do it, but it's see the blueprint and not just the blueprint, but see it as a finished manifested thing because the moment you see it, that you can anchor into seeing it, then you can feel it and you feel it as it's already done. That's why in the Bible it says to pray as if you already have what you're praying for. Well, if you already have it, then what are you praying for? Clearly, you're not begging or beseeching. You are anchoring into what you know to be the truth. So see it. Once you see it, you can be it. So S, see it. You, understand it. What is your raison d'etre? What is your reason for being? What is your reason for being successful? Why do you want to be successful? Like, why do you want to be healthy? Why do you want to have financial balance and stability and be an excellent steward of your finances? Why do you want to learn more in-depth science of mind and spirit? Why do you come to CSL Seattle? What is your reasoning? Why? Because whatever that mental equivalent is, is what you are going to bring into your life. That's what will rise up to match and meet your mental equivalent. S-U-C. Call it. Think. Speak. Feel and act in alignment with what you understand and recognize as true abundance, physically, intellectually, emotionally, spiritually, relationship-wise, etc. Call it forth. I speak it. The, the, we often refer to abracadabra as the magic phrase, the magic words, but it is often referenced that abracadabra is a Hebrew or Aramaic phrase that says, I will create that which I speak. The Bible also says we have the power of life and death in our tongue. So when we call it forth, call it forth verbally, call it forth energetically, you are speaking it into existence. S, U, C, second C, start to create. Start to go about living in such a way that you recognize it. So that means treat and move your feet. Act as if you are already successful. Well, if you're already successful physically, then what does that mean? How do you begin? Does that mean exercise? Does it mean changing what you eat and how you eat? Does it mean uh, meditating? Does it mean anchoring to your breath? Like, what does it mean to show up intellectually successful? Successful in your relationships. What does that mean? Does it mean setting healthy boundaries? Does it mean pouring into yourself first, tithing into you first so that you are giving to others from your overflow and not from your fumes? What does it mean for you to now create actual success in your life, to walk the walk? Okay? S-U-C-C-E. Empower it. So once you have, you've seen it, you understand it, call it forth, you create it, you now have to empower. That means aligning in all of the ways that you possibly can align to bring power to it. Empower, empower. So think it. There's only one mind and that mind is God. Speak it. That knowing that there's only one life and that life is God, that these words that are spoken are the words of creation, the words of the infinite universe, the words of the infinite I am, I am ever becoming, speaking truth about itself. Speak it, act that way, and feel it with authority and power. Be the Lord, the steward of what you speak, what 
you think, what you feel, what you manifest and create. Bring it into being. Give it power. That means anything that is showing up contrary to it has to go bye-bye. Healthy boundaries. And if those healthy boundaries are self-limiting thoughts, when they come before us, then it's saying, uh, no, I'm good, not today. Maybe, now probably ain't gonna call you back later, but you go about your business. Nice chat, but you don't need you anymore. Like whatever it is, it means taking care and bringing power to our vision, to our words, to our actions, to our feelings, to all of these things that we are bringing success into. Give it power. S, sustain it. Develop a consistent practice of. We, Ernest Holmes said uh, many times about this idea of you don't just simply treat and go about your business. You treat until you see that which you are treating for demonstrated as a reality. So if I must treat every day, then I'm going to treat every day. Uh, we breathe every day, don't we? We don't say, you know what, I don't really feel like breathing today, so I, I, I might wait until Saturday and breathe again. We sustain our breath. We bathe, so we are sustaining a level of cleanliness. We clean our homes, we, we cook, we eat, we are sustaining certain things in health and well-being. Why are we not doing the same kind of sustained uh, living, sustained thriving, in all of the areas of our lives. Be consistent, bring strength, bring support, bring nurturing into all of these areas. That means if you need a prac session, get a practitioner. It means if you need to pray with a minister, you get the minister on, on speed dial. Like whatever, whatever it is you need. If you need a life coach, get a life coach. If you, if you whatever it is, it will help you sustain it, bring it in. Call it forth, put it into place, and practice it. If you need an accountability partner, get an account. I call me. Trust and believe. I'll be like, look, did you did you meditate today? You didn't. You owe me. You owe me. Uh, you owe me. You owe me ten pushups. Like whatever it is. But you, an accountability partner, mastermind group, whatever it is that will assist you in sustaining it, moment by moment. That's the key. We breathe moment by moment. I can't breathe for tomorrow. I can't re-breathe re -breathe the breath from yesterday. I can only breathe right now. So sustaining my level of being a success in all areas of my life, I only need to do it right now, in this breath, in this moment. I don't have to worry about tomorrow. Forget about yesterday. Just sustain it right here and right now. That's it. And then lastly, share it. Pass the torch. The law of reciprocity, the law of circulation is as we give, so shall we receive. What you give to another, you want success? Then help others to be successful. Help others to recognize their own divine spark, as it talks about in the Pixar cartoon movie, Soul. Whatever you are sharing, giving of yourself to them, helping them, Marianne Williamson says, that to the degree that when we recognize our own magnificent awesomeness, and yes, I'm paraphrasing, that when we recognize our own magnificent awesomeness and our audacity to shine and be powerful, we give other people permission to do and be the same. Share it. Speak into their life. Pour into their life. Share love, share light, share your magnificence with them so that they recognize their own divine magnificence and then they grow into it. See it, understand it, call it. Like that's what we're, that's what we're, like each moment by moment, how am I bringing this idea of being success into my life? And we breathe. Because I know that there are, there are some of you sitting there saying, well, Ray, that's easy for you to say, but if only you knew me. And, and I understand the concept. Trust and believe. <laughs> Trust and believe. For real. I understand. Years and years of depression, years and years of self-limiting, self-suicidal you know, idea, years and years and years and years and years and years of it. Years of my own addictions. I, while I wasn't addicted to drugs, I was addicted to other things. Things that weren't as healthy. 
I was addicted to sugar for one, comfort foods. That's how I ended up going up to 310 pounds between 2009 and 11. Because I got depressed, got sad, sad enough that I wasn't taking care of myself. And then I had a wake up call and was like, uh, high cholesterol, high blood pressure is like knocking on your door right now. What are you going to do? So I know, I know. And it's a moment, like I said, it's a moment by moment practice. But how do we invoke it and evoke it, call it in and call it forth moment by moment in our lives? We have that ability. We have that power. We can do that. And then share it. How, how do we make a world that works for all? Very simply, by standing in and as the truth, representing what it is, allowing that which God is in me, as me, is me, embodying it. Ernest Holmes references and says, we are only going to, and this is a paraphrase, we are only going to recognize God to the degree that we embody it, to the degree that we embody love, to the degree that we embody success, to the degree that we allow the infinite power of all that is to be what it is as us in us, through us. To the degree that we embody it is the degree that we will recognize it and understand it. That's why in our We Believe statement it says we believe in the direct revelation of truth through our intuitive and spiritual nature and that anyone may become a revealer of truth who lives in close contact with the indwelling, all-dwelling God. When we recognize that God is not just within us, like a hot dog in a hot dog bun, but it is in us, it is this skin, it is this, this hair, or lack thereof, it is, it is all of us, it is every muscle fiber, every sinew, every bone, every tendon, it is all that we are, God, a circle whose circumference is nowhere, whose center is everywhere, the very center of God is right where each one of us is. And when we embody that, and we bring that awareness, then how do we fail? I mean, really fail. We may, we may fail, but we don't fail, if you know what I mean. Like, I cannot be a failure. Two plus two equals nine. Well, yeah, I got it wrong. I missed the mark. But that does not change my divinity, does not change my spiritual magnificence. So let me bring my spiritual magnificence and my divinity to the next time that I add two plus two. To the next time I balance a checkbook, to the next time that I tithe, to the next time that I ask a practitioner to pray and know the truth with me, for me, to the next time that I come to my center, to the next time that I log on, to the next phone call with my supervisor, to the next phone call with an employee, to the next time I log on to the news and hear something about COVID, do I bring my spiritual magnificence and my awareness of this divine power and presence that I am, do I bring that to bear on everything that comes before me and comes within me and moves through me? Because when I do that, then success and being full of success is inevitable. Because ultimately, if God is all there is and it is what we are, then we are right here and right now as successful as that which keeps the planets in orbit, as that which keeps grass growing green, as that which makes apples red and yellow and green, and that which keeps birds flying in the sky, because that which God is, is success itself. And that is what is breathing us and moving and having its beingness as us. That right there makes us full of success, full of love, full of light, full of power. Now let's embody it. Let's live recognizing and knowing that. Namaste. All right, so let's stay in that space right now. Uh, I invite you to turn your attention inward and think on these thoughts. Hmm. So turning inward, I first recognize silence. 
and I breathe into that silence right now, relaxing my body. I breathe following my breath to a calm and relaxed jaw, shoulders. And as I do that, I smile. I smile in the presence of the great auspicious one, divine love, Shiva Shiva, Mahadeva. I accept all the good that is mine by divine right. I believe all good is mine because I am created in the image and likeness of God, which is synonymous with all good. I feel this truth tingling throughout my body, shining its light in every dark place. The truth that God is my source and I am forever connected hooked up, turned on, and ready to accept my greatness. In this spring season, we think about the story of resurrection, or new birth, or new beginnings, which may symbolize each one of us stepping up and accepting our place in the universe accepting our divine gifts, accepting our, our authentic, true self, and bringing it into the world to share with each other. Accept this I am presence in you right now. This I am presence is you. What will you accept and claim for yourself on its behalf? I see myself as capable, healthy, and strong. I see myself as intelligent and wise. I see myself as calm, patient, and peaceful. I can do all things through this higher mind within me. I see myself as a perfect reflection of love, shining brightly, ushering God's joy into this world. Shiva Shiva Mahadeva, the great auspicious one. Everything will do And when everything 
everything is burnt. I will take these ashes and offer them up to you. Shiva, Shiva, Mahadeva. to think about that. I invite you to into that practice this week, knowing that what that that you or I will personally and physically experience everything that we write in our story. So because of that, I want to be sure and write in some fun. Mm -hmm. Do you remember fun? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's all supposed to be fun. So don't forget the fun. Let's sing together. God, you are every mountain. God, you are every ocean. God, you are. Every canyon, every inch of earth and sky, God you are, every morning, God you are, everything that 
God you are, every moment, every second of my life. Everything I see, everything I do, everything I am is you. Everything you love, everything you know, everything I know is you. gratefully share and send out to bless, to prosper, knowing that as I give, I also receive. And our affirmation, generously I give and richly I receive. Thank you, Tamara, for your gracious service to the show. Thank you, Fred, for the service. I love 
watch Tamara. <laughs> and uh, I want to remind you too about the prayer chest. Please utilize the prayer chest. It does not matter how big or how small your prayer is. Put your name in that prayer chest. Turn over to God um, whatever it is that is challenging you or maybe uh, you'd like extra energy on that. Lou will take those home and she will pray in her uh, spiritual time on behalf of you and those are all kept confidential. So thank you so much, Lou, for your generous offering. And uh, so we're ready to claim our good. Um, here it is, and I just want to remind you here, okay? I don't want you to get caught up on the word burden is what I don't want you to do, okay? Uh, Florence Scovel Shin says, man violates divine law when he carries a burden, okay? A burden is an adverse or an unfavorable thought rooted in the subconscious mind. She says, cast your burdens onto the Christ within you and go free. So that's what we're doing. Those thoughts that we can't seem to get out of our mind, we're casting those upon the Christ within that already knows us to be whole, perfect, and complete. It's just another way to turn it over to God, okay? So five times, here we go, and you can think of your own, your own thing that you consider to be burden to you, okay? So here we go. I cast this burden upon the Christ within me, and I go free to be healthy, wealthy, and wise. Again, I cast this burden upon the Christ within me, and I go free to be healthy, wealthy, and wise. I cast this burden upon the Christ within me, and I go free to be healthy, wealthy, and wise. I cast this burden upon the Christ within me, and I go free to be healthy, wealthy, and wise. Last time, really feel the energy of healthy, wealthy, and wise when we say it. Okay, here we go, last time. I cast this burden upon the Christ within me, and I go free to be healthy, wealthy, and wise. I'm in the right place at the right time. I am just where I'm supposed to be. I'm in the right place at the right time. I am just where I'm supposed to be. I'm in the right place, at the right time, I am just where I'm supposed to be. I'm in the right place, at the right time, I am just where I'm supposed to be. I'm in the right place. Oh, this is what I'm 